the year before uh, that's one of the hardest ma uh, matches to have to do is to go out and uh, compete for third place well both of them will be in the same situation having only just a few minutes ago lost their semi-final matches so it's an even playing field and now they know that one of them will come away with a bronze and the other in that really frustrating position just outside the medals i'm sure the poland performance directors are sitting back and saying well we're going to win a bronze medal from this match won't be quite so for the athletes themselves well that's why i said it'd be interesting to see how the coaches react to it all the coaches out there but representing both fences and I mean, all of the fences on the international circuit will be very aware of each other's styles, but no two as much as Pluto and Castro, both from Poland. Both will know each other's game inside out from training, from the preparation camp as well. Now they've used each other as sparring partners, no doubt throughout, maybe even in the warm-up, but never, I'm sure, did they expect to meet each other in the bronze medal match or hope to meet each other in the bronze medal match. Yeah, I was going to say that. I, I, I wondered whether they did use each other to, to warm up together, whether that actually happens. Just because they're from the same country, of course, doesn't necessarily mean they train together all the time. But like you say, they obviously spar together to a degree, and so they'll know each other's styles. And uh, style is very very important and to know what the other person is going to do so uh, let's see how it unfolds poland against poland for the bronze medal edrin castro Please start the on the left hand side the piste and gregor's pluta on the right hand side well it was a very tight match for both of these on their journey to this gregor's pluta maybe feeling slightly more frustrated having lost just by one point in his fight against Jen Tafalu, the Greek winner. Whereas Castro defeated a little more convincingly by Anton Datsuko, 15 points to eight in his semi-final match. But now we start at 0-0, zero, zero, the first to 15. Very early start for Castro. Both very evenly ranked after the pools. Pluto ranked fifth, Castro third. So similar performance early on in the competition. But Castro off to an early advantage. And the yellow card awarded to his competitor. Well, the younger of the two just putting pressure on the defending Paralympic champion and he now reacts this first point on the board. Yeah, I just wonder whether his heart is absolutely in it now because he, he really will have to dig deep. Sometimes you have to bounce back. He's 4-1 down here. Is he going to let it go? Well, this is an interesting dynamic. We've got the world champion. Adrian Castro from last year up against the reigning Paralympic champion from four years ago. So maybe Castro, the athlete, more on form in 2016. He has youth on his side. But Pluta, at 41 years of age, maybe has the experience on his. Yeah, well, you can see why the Polish coach was obviously up in arms because uh, with these two in your squad, you probably kind of half expect getting at least one of them through to the final, but it wasn't to be. Well, only one second gone on the clock, just showing how quick this fight is. The clock is always stopped after a hit. 
There was one extra point awarded, and now we're suddenly at three all between Castro and Pluta. Pluta taking the lead for the first time in this match. Just to explain just a little bit about the clock there, because it's three minute countdown, three minute uh, contest, but we haven't seen it go far beyond one minute, have we? But uh, well, after the first fencer to score eight hits, there will be a one minute break. And unless we get to the three minute timer, which already at four all with just two whole seconds gone, <laughs> I think that's very unlikely. I think so. Well, another request to see the review. And it was Pluta who thought he'd won that victory, but not been awarded. And Castro regains the lead. Starting to put the pressure on the... Oh, that was very quick off the mark for Pluta. So quick. The referee hadn't even had a chance to finish. Hello, but maybe a little too fast there and awarding a point in such a tight match could be costly. Yeah, like you say, they're going on the A, aren't they? But uh, it's sometimes just that little bit. They're jumping the gun just a little bit and it does cost them. And they can't afford points at this stage. Like you say, get to eight, they'll have a little bit of a break. Is that going to be it? Nope, seven, six. Another review requested this time by Castro. You can feel the tension between these two athletes. Doesn't matter if you're competing for the same country. Once the mask is on and you're in position on the piece, it is an opponent that you want to beat. And that score remains. One appeal left for Castro. Well, again, he jumped the gun. Yeah, and there it is. Eight points to six. A one-minute break. And Pluta, I think, annoyed at himself for that. Undoubtedly so. He's given two points away to Castro. And Castro leads, leads by two points. So the two red cards well, again, basically we, separate yeah, these two athletes. Exactly. We were saying how important the um, jump in the gun is. I mean, it's okay being off the blocks, but uh, if you're off the blocks just that little bit too much, it's cost him two very valuable points, like you say. That is the lead to Castro. And he looks angry with himself. And, you know, the attitude that he had coming into his semi-final, you could kind of see there that he was really finding it difficult to cope with the pressures. And here he is, Gregor's Pluta. Now, his head is down, and he needs to really try and pick his head up, and certainly a lot happier there, Adrian Castro of Poland. Coming towards the end of the one-minute break period, some happy Polish fans. They know they're about to witness a medal for their nation. But whether they're split between Castro and Pluta, there's very little separating the two athletes, although that margin just increased now to three-point advantage. Referee getting out a card. Well, accidentally got the black one out, but to Castro's relief, it is just a yellow. So quick by Adrian Castro. Leads by four points. Now up to five, that lead extending rapidly on the left-hand side of the piece. Nothing allowed on that double hit. Pluta trying to make a comeback. He's got quite a wall to climb at the moment. Four points behind. And Castro with that counter-attack, getting another score on the board, just three points away from making it into that final well now it is just two yeah just two points away here and is that going to be it one back there for pluta well he looks very very tight to me pluta he is really disturbed about the whole situation semi-final 
he looked uh, as if he was struggling. And the young Castro here really taking the fight to him. Wow. Castro needs one more victory to make it into the gold medal match. And he has just got that victory he needed. The referee's arm goes up. And Castro wins that semi-final fight over his teammate, Greg Orpeluta, and the defending Paralympic champion. Well, he ends, doesn't he, without the, uh, well, without the medal? Without a medal. Castro has won that bronze medal. Adrian Castro, the bronze medalist in the men's